Well, coming up on today's show, an update on the Hyundai Kona battery charging situation, Jaguar delaying some iPace deliveries, and Mitsubishi Outlanders arrive in the UK, fresh for an August the 1st launch. Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are in the world. Hello and welcome to the Friday, the 27th edition of EV News Daily. It's Martin Lee here with the news you need to know about electric cars and the move towards sustainable transport. Should we kick off with a couple of Friday facts? for you. Well, the first one is all about China's electric buses and how much oil they are displacing. If in the last day, 280,000 barrels of of fuel have been made in the last 24 hours, well, they wouldn't be needed in China because that's how many barrels of fuel are being displaced by China's electric buses every single day and again the next day. And again the next day. Nine and a half thousand zero emission EV buses are being launched every five weeks in China right now. And it's starting to have a big impact on fossil fuel consumption. And the next Friday fact for you, uh, Greg Wester, who I follow on Twitter, he is at GWester. Ah, he said this, Tesla let software engineers onto the factory floor to join the line and turn wrenches so they can automate the work and retool the line for speed. Well, that was a fascinating, just little nugget of information about maybe how some people work differently, some companies work differently, how those structures are being broken down. And why not say to the software engineers, well, come and see how we put the wheels on and see if you can work out a better way to do it. I just thought it was fascinating. Well, we'll kick off with um, a bit more about the Hyundai Kona. So I finally caught up with the second hour of Bjorn Nyland's YouTube review of the Hyundai Kona and super fascinating, really interesting and in the second video i think it's the second one he gets round to trying out some rapid charging and the two chargers he goes to one was one of the new 150 175 kilowatt maybe uh, chargers that wasn't working then he went to a 100 kilowatt charger and that would only deliver about 50 kilowatts if i remember remember correctly and then i was talking about the hyundai kona and a clean technica article earlier in the week that i read which had talked about 80 kilowatt charge speeds. And I thought it was kind of interesting because I read so many articles. Max Holland, uh, for his um, article on Clean Technica, had quoted 80 kilowatts charging. So I kind of questioned that and said, well, I, everywhere I read is 100. Well, Max, thank you so much for firstly listening to the podcast and correcting me. Uh, Max says, uh, thanks for mentioning my recent Kona article on Clean Technica. The charging in power info uh, that I wasn't confident about, he referenced and he put a link through to it, uh, to an article on Clean Technica, uh, which was sourced from a New York Motor Show, where John from the website was talking to he and the engineers, specifically about the current at which the batteries take. So that is first-hand information. Everything else I work with is second-hand information. But the way that I justified it back to Max, well, I'll read you my email. It's nothing particularly private. It was a, a, a one-to-one email. But I said, hi, Max. I think the confusion here is on the all of the Hyundai press materials, all of the Hyundai websites that you go to say that the Hyundai Kona EV has a so-and-so charge speed, like 54 minutes, when connected to a 100 kilowatt charger. And from that, I think lots of people have put two and two together and maybe got five. Certainly, I saw that phrase when connected to a 100 kilowatt charger and assumed it would charge at 100 kilowatts. And if if you go to Google uh, and search for Hyundai Kona EV 100 kilowatt, you'll get loads of websites all cropping up in the results, all saying it charges at 100 kilowatts. And maybe that is something that I didn't question. So if you watch Bjorn's video as well, he says that he's been told it charges at 100 kilowatts. So, here's the kind of numbers, the way it breaks down. Firstly, uh, yes, let's listen to Max and John at Clean Technica because they have fir- a first-hand piece of information from he and the engineers who are talking about the current of uh, the battery pack being 200 amps. Also, I've tracked down on the Hyundai North America press website the data sheet and it confirms a couple of other things that I'd read which is that the battery pack 
is 356 volts nominal, uses the same LG chem cells as the um, Chevrolet Bolt, for instance. So if the engineers that Clean Technica were talking to from Hyundai confirm the maximum current is 200 amps at that voltage, well, you're looking at kind of ionic charge speeds of about 71, 72 kilowatts. If they can up the current and go higher than 200 amps, well, then you can get to your 80 kilowatt charges. Getting to 100 won't be achievable. And also... So there's something in my brain that tells me uh, the current limit on the CCS charging connector also is 200 amps current, which would limit it anyway on the charges for the current spec of CCS uh, Combo 1. So in conclusion, what does all that mean? Then, well, I'm pretty confident now, having spoken to Max and Clean Technica and their first-hand experiences, pretty certain that we can call it the Hyundai Kona EV will not have 100 kilowatt charge speeds regardless of the rapid charger, the ultra charger, whatever you want to call it, that it is connected to. However, will it be faster than nearly every other car you can buy on the market? Yes, including the Hyundai Ioniq, which if you connect it to a really fast charger, will get up to about 70. I, At the moment, I think it's going to be somewhere between 70 and 80. The next thing is, we know that Bjorn Nyland has an exceptional relationship with people that can supply another car and hopefully he can get it on a, a charger where the charger's working for a start, either a 175 or a 350 kilowatt charger with a very low state of charge as well, so there's no throttling going on, so nice low state of charge on the battery, and just see if he just maxes the power into it, what can it do? This is super interesting, not just if you are thinking of buying the Hyundai Kona EV, but maybe you've got an EV already, and you're kind of thinking about upgrading it at some point and of course the majority of the charges in all the places that you live around the world certainly here in the uk they all max out at 50 anyway unless you're talking tesla so whether it's chatamo or ccs you're always going to be limited to 50 and uh, those other manufacturers are catching up with tesla at quite a rate so in conclusion i guess i'm saying let's wait and see right let's move on to jaguar and they've delayed some ipace deliveries according to electric because they've heard from some disappointed owners that some are seeing their deliveries pushed back by several months into 2019 and i mention it because i've had the same in fact there's a uh, a chap that i chat to either on dm or or an email and he put a very early order order in for the jaguar ipace suv and then his was pushed back by a long way and the dealer told him it was because of manufacturing problems. And I didn't report it on the podcast at the time. Firstly, because he said, can you please not report it? And also, there's that bond of trust. And it really is just he said, she said. And I'm not going to put that out there without another source confirming it. Well, now Electrek says the same thing. Dealers, according to Electrek, dealers telling them it's manufacturing issues. Jaguar say it's not. They are prioritising orders. Electric contra- contacted Jaguar over the issue, and the automaker says it still plans for customer production to start late this summer, which is non-specific. It confirmed that some customers are experiencing delays because of prioritisation. In some instances, individual customers may have been informed of a delay regarding their order. This will be due to prioritisation of market-specific orders to best meet the exceptional demand, says Jaguar. Well, a source familiar with the matter told Electric the Jaguar's supply of Matrix LED headlights are actually limited, and the company might be pushing orders of the non-first edition vehicles in order to focus on the first edition vehicles, which need to be a 2019 model year. I'll put a link to the Electric article in the show notes if you want to read more. Well, EV Connect, a provider of charging solutions, including a cloud-based network management platform, has closed an $8 million financing round led by Ecosystem Integrity Fund. According to Charged EVs, the company will use these new funds to accelerate the deployment of its EV cloud management platform in the US, advance its integration with utility grid systems, and expand into new global markets. And it's more evidence uh, that there's some very big money following around smart things with charging and grid systems as well. Well, in preparation for the launch of the new 2019 Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid, which goes on sale here in the UK August 1, or August the 1st, as any normal person would say, the first shipment of vehicles arrived in the UK at Bristol's Royal Portbury Docks, 
with more shipments coming soon. According to the Electric Cars Report website, the new 2019 Outlander plug-in has been engineered to meet the latest emissions regulations. According to the new WLTP test cycle, 46 grams per kilometre of CO2 and an EV-only range of 28 miles, uh, also attracting the lowest possible benefit-in-kind rate of 13%. Well, the first batch of 200, which rolled off the boat, will soon be followed by... A uh, tenfold increase, 2,000 more coming very soon to the UK. Well, Daimler uh, yesterday said it's going to add battery manufacturing capabilities to its Mercedes-Benz plants in Sindelfingen and Untertuikheim as the carmaker seeks to transition from combustion to electric cars. According to an Autoblog article, the battery deal is part of a 1.5 billion euro deal. That's 1.75 billion US dollars. It's a transformation plan to retool Mercedes-Benz plants to build zero emission and autonomous vehicles. The carmaker said uh, that uh, that one of those plants currently making the S class, and it's going to be retooled for battery manufacturing capabilities. There's some big numbers coming out of those factories, not in the next weeks and months, but when they really ramp up, we'll see a lot of Mercedes-Benz uh, EVs, uh, thanks to this investment being made now. And finally, talking of investment, crippled with public debt and dogged by rising oil prices, Barbados's or the Barbadian Island government want to make their bus network electric as well and switch all government transport to EVs as well. According to Reuters, the increased state investment in electric buses would help upgrade transport systems and cut climate-changing emissions and paving the way for consumers to follow. Plug-in vehicles could also piggyback on a push to inject more power into the grid. Import duties for electric vehicles that are very high in Barbados are compared to combustion engine cars, uh, which are, have lower import duties. Well, thank you so much for all of your feedback today. Particularly, it's been a really busy day on email. I wonder why. I mentioned yesterday that I'd been sent by a load of um, car stickers, battery on board stickers for your EV by Bill Pollock uh, from Toronto. And thank you so much, Bill, for sending them through. Uh, they're, they're sold out. If you can possibly sell out of something that is free. Well, Bill sent me a load of them to the UK. And I said, that if you're listening in the UK, I'll send these on. And uh, I definitely had more emails than I've got stickers. So Bill and I are going to have a little chat about that and uh, come to some arrangements. Because if it's uh, only going to cost me a few quid uh, to send these out, then it's a nice little thank you to you for listening to the podcast and uh, putting up with my ramblings. So thank you very much for your emails to hello at evnewsdaily.com. Uh, any that I don't have uh, enough to send out for, we'll sort something out for you, don't worry. Well, you can listen to every previous 192 episodes of the podcast on all the usual platforms. Tomorrow, by the way, tomorrow is another Saturday special, another interview uh, with somebody that will bring a little bit of intelligence to this show, uh, and that will be published for Saturday's one. In the meantime, all the previous archive is all on iTunes and Google Play, Spotify and YouTube, TuneIn and Stitcher, and the blog at evnewsdaily.com, and if you subscribe, you get them first and free and automatically. Can you do me a small small favour and share the podcast with somebody who you might know is interested in EVs or possibly buying one or researching into one for a future purchase maybe. Maybe it's a forum that you go to or maybe it's on just on your own social media. If you can possibly share this, you know it will be doing me such a massive favour. It's not like there's a huge advertising budget for the podcast, so if you and I can spread the word kind of organically, word of mouth, we'll convert more people to EVs. Come and say hi on the social network, searching EV News Daily. You'll find me have a wonderful day and look out for the Saturday special tomorrow.